So this video is on the sunspot problem from chapter 6, assignment 11. And um, I expect that you've already read through the problem and kind of have a general idea of what's going on. Um, so the first question says, what is the period of a sunspot cycle? So there were 198 years in this period of time, 1948 to 1750. So if you subtract those values, you get the 198 years, and you know that there were 11 complete cycles in those 198 years. So you need to take 198 and divide it by 11 to get the length of one cycle. So that's some arithmetic that's um, part of the problem, and there isn't a good way to teach you that. You just have to read the problem and have the confidence to think about it and figure out. So this first question is 18 years. Okay. Assume the number of sunspots per year is sinusoidal, that just means a sine or a cosine function, um, of time with a maximum, and a maximum occurred in 1948. So 1948, and we're going to call this years since 1948, that, we get that clue here, that we're saying as a function of years since 1948, and number of sunspots is 110. Now, if one cycle is 18 years, then we will be back to 110 sunspots in 18 years. And halfway through there, we'll get to a minimum at uh, 9 years. So then the years that this happens, this will be 1957, and 9 years after that is 1966. And then every 18 years, this starts over. So let's put 110 on right here on the y-axis because that's time zero. And we'll be back to 110. And then in the middle of that, we have only 10. It's probably a little too high. Put it down here. Okay, so that's 10. I'm not spending a lot of time thinking about the scale here. I'm just trying to get a rough sketch to help me get the function. So this was 9. This is 18. And that should be enough to get this cosine curve. So it looks something like this. You should be able to do a better sketch with a pencil and a piece of paper. But that's not too bad. Okay, so the first key, find the middle. Get a line. So if you find the middle and figure out what that is. So um, let's run through all of the variables. We need the amplitude. and the period, and the vertical shift, and the horizontal shift. So the vertical shift is where that line is there, which is in the middle of 110 and 10. So you could figure it out in your head a variety of ways, or you can just find the average of 10 and 110. So add those two values together, 110 plus 10 is 120, and 120 divided by 2 is 60. And then if this, the height of this line is 60 here on the y-axis, then you can see that this 10 to 60 is 50, and 60 to 110 is also 50, so that's the amplitude. Remember, that's this distance, and that's also this distance. Then the period is the length of one cycle. So in this problem, the period is 18. Because it took 18 years from here to here. 
All right, and then I would say the horizontal shift is zero because this first point here is right on the y-axis. Okay, so the equation for the sunspot problem, and let's use some function notation um, just for practice. So um, let's say f of t is equal to uh, the vertical shift 60 plus the amplitude 50 times the cosine of the period. We need the B value. So the B value is equal to 2 pi over 18, which simplifies to pi over 9. and then the time, and then uh, zero. So we have some extra parentheses here. We didn't need those there. So 60 plus 50 cosine pi over 9t will give us the function for the sunspot problem. All right, so that takes us through d here, and which really should have been c, if you notice some lettering mistakes here. But the second d says, how many sunspots will there be in the year 2020? So we're going to use the calculator for this, but um, it's kind of hard since it's a lot of years since 1948. So I would first, as we try to figure out the answer for the second letter D here, we need to know how much time is between 2020 and 1948. So if you subtract those values, you get uh, 2 and that will change to an 11 minus 4 is 7, and then the rest of those will be gone. So it's 72 years after 1948. All right, so we're going to bring up the calculator and do a little work here to help figure that out. So if you take, first you got to turn on the calculator, make sure you're in radian mode, set up your window for the problem. So let's look at this to help figure out the window. Um, for now, let's change our x min 0 and um, let's say 20. I might change this actually to um, say negative 2. So I'm a little bit uh, beyond what I have on my graph there. And then count by 2's for the tick marks and a little below 0 here and up to maybe 120 for the maximum. And then I'm going to type in the function 60 plus 50 cosine um, pi divided by 9 and that, no, too many parentheses there pi divided by 9 times x. Okay, so um, then that should give us a nice graph. My y-axis doesn't have any meaningful tick marks on it. I'm going to fix that. I have a y scale of <coughs> 1. That shouldn't be what it is. That's putting a tick mark at every 1. So I'm going to put a tick mark at every 20. Now look at that graph. <clears throat> okay, so that's good. Looks just like the picture. You can double check to make sure you have it right by doing something like second calculate value at 18 and see if it does in fact equal 110. Since it does, and that's one of my data points, uh, it looks pretty good. And just to double check, second calculate value at time 9 should equal 10 because that's also one of my data points. And I could check the third one, but I think that suffices. All right, so question D is asking us to find the number of sunspots at year 72. So it's essentially saying, what is F of 72? So plug in 72 into the equation into the calculator and get the y value there. 
Now the problem is, is my window is only going from 0 to 20 about, and I need to substitute in 72. So I need to change my window. And I don't really need to see all of these. How about we change the window to be from, say, 60 to something past 72, maybe 80, and still counting by twos. So let's try that. So this is 60 years after 1948, and this is uh, 80 years after 1948, and we just want to do second, calculate value at 72. And we happen to get 110. Not sure that I meant for that to happen, but that's what we got, 110. Okay, and then it also asks for this year. So this year, 2013 minus 1948 is, uh, I have it here, 65 years after 1948. 2013 is 65 years after 1948. So bring the calculator back up and adjust the window so I can, oh, I can do 65 because it's going down to 60. And so second, calculate value 65. And I get 21.698. All right. Then E says, find the first year after year 2020 in which there will be about 35 sunspots. So after year 2020, and that's 72, for which there'll be about 35 sunspots. So I'm going to give us some more room here. And here. And we need 35 sunspots. So we're going to come in here and we need 35, and we want it to be after year 72. So I'm going to adjust the window again so I make sure I get the right data and change this to 70 and maybe bring this up to 90. And graph that. And there's uh, the 35 sunspots. And I just want to find these um, two points. Find the, oh no, just one point. Find the first year after 2020 from where there will be about 35 sunspots. So you find that point of intersection by doing second, calculate, intersect. Press enter when it asks you if it's the first curve. Press enter for the second curve and then move the blinker closest to the one that you want to find. And I get x equals 78. So for question E, for question E, uh, it says to find the first year after 2020 where there'll be 35 sunspots. So I think it's nice to use some function notation to show what you're doing. We are looking for the value of time um, such that the function is equal to 35. And we know that the time value has to be greater than uh, 72 years because we want it to be after 2020. And that answer that we just got from the calculator was 78. So that's 78 years after 1948 which is year 2026. Okay. This kind of calculation, I know it makes the problem a little bit harder for you, but you can handle that. 78 years after 1948. So if it asks you what year, then you should translate that 78 into years after 1948. All right, and then part F says, what is the first year after 2020 in which there'll be a maximum number of sunspots? Now that question you don't even really need the calculator for because there was a maximum number of sunspots in 2020, 110. 
And so 18 years after that, there will be another maximum. So I already know without using the calculator that 18 years after 2020, it'll be back to another maximum. So it's going to happen in year 2038. Because I know that one cycle is 18 years,